Hello my soccer universe, uh, it is my pleasure to give you another conversation with a fellow collector, this time slightly shorter than the pre pre previous ones, because the weather really uh, <laughs> put trouble on the com 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 conversation, the internet connection here is really good as long as there's not a big storm and you will see at the end of the video a storm is come coming in, I have to jump up to close the window because I was about to get doused here from uh, the rain. In any case, that's beside, this is just a little caveat that I have to give you. The interview that I'm giving to you is with uh, Chris, who runs the, the Futbolero uh, YouTube channel, a channel that I really, really would love you to also check, check out. He, like me, does um, not only show off his collection, unpacks jerseys, which is how we got co co connect, but he also does some match reviews uh, a, a similar to I for the games that he's watching. So. Uh, really, really nice. He's one of my oldest uh, followers. I do remember that, uh, especially just before you know the COVID period, we were really uh, regularly chatting. And I think at the time I had a right around 100 subscribers. So, you know, long time, long time ago, he has been really following. He also um, has been encouraging me because there was a time when I just uh, used my laptop camera uh, to use a better camera and all, you know, all these kind, 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 kind of things, you know, some, so sometimes you get uh, nice suggestions from your fellow subscribers. Now, uh, the talk that I went, I went in there with three basic questions, which we do cover. However, as it's always the case when I'm talking to fellow collectors, we just go a little bit all over the place as well. Uh, and it was not helped that, you know, there was a little delay in connection. Uh, it was sometimes where I thought that I thought that I could talk when he had just we still was finishing up so you know we have been always in sync not that it is a big problem either way just wanted to make sure uh that this is also under understood this is just uh technology playing its part uh there that it's not all all sync sync sync, sync but we could get all of our um points in so my major um points of discussion were since he is the first uh, of my interviews, I mean, the first one that I did with Ricardo was also um, where he lives in, in the States, which is not prime soccer country, but you know, uh, he's from Mexico, which I consider a, a or still consider, yeah, of course, can consider a big uh, soccer nation. Idris is from France, world champion, uh, champions. Um, Andy is from Scotland, lives in England, a prime uh, soccer countries. Chris is from the Philippines, which of course is very interesting if you do a collection. So one of my questions, of course, was how do you collect from so far uh, being so far away? Then, of course, we needed to do some other uh, topics. Um, the one is that I wanted to discuss this time. We stayed a little bit more on the club tours, as since he's a huge Barcelona fan and Milan fan. Uh, I wanted to discuss to him what is an ideal Barcelona away jersey and then uh, he made a video on the new Fiorentina logo and that actually prompted me let's talk a little bit rebranding because um, it is so easy to uh, to always get upset about it so let's talk a little uh, a little bit of pros and cons and what rebranding works well and so on and there is there's a definite Italian focus there uh, if we talk Fiorentina we talk Inter we talk Juventus but we also talk a few other teams so again before I let you go please subscribe to Chris's YouTube channel also check him out on Instagram uh, where he posts uh, his jerseys as well uh, really nice follow uh, and very well worth your time and with all that i will see you on the other side hey hello hey there hello chris and welcome salutations to... universe <laughs> yes exactly from my universe to your universe <laughs> yeah. it's a different perspective uh, uh are you usually shooting 90 de at a 90 degree angle from here or is it different? well this is a different setup I I used to have I'm this is from my setup that I always do right ah, here on the it. back. Got it, got it. Interesting to see a different perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I'm so happy that, that we could make this talk. Uh as yeah, for it's I should say I time. chose Barcelona because we will talk a little bit Barcelona, although it's not the best time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. 
the loss against Frankfurt and the invasion of the Frankfurt friends that the Camp Nou was far beyond my wildest belief as I, a Barcelona fan. I saw this coming. I saw it I coming know. all the way because Frankfurt fans travel. They are like Rangers. Yeah, 30,000 of them. Yep. And all in white. All, all white clad uh, Frankfurt fans invaded Catalonia. Yep. All of them, they got the season tickets from some of those uh, backstabbing uh, Barca fans. Yeah, exactly. Or on their vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, for me, it was weird because, I mean, I usually say Barca is one of my favorite teams. But yesterday I found myself, or I found myself liking Frankfurt a whole lot more than Barcelona yesterday. So yeah, the shirt of Frankfurt to me it kind of does remind me of Milan. Yes, but they have a, some sort of different element of the of what Frankfurt have. They some of them could be either black, or they usually occasionally use white from their away days, and also. Uh, they used to have this iconic red shirt made by Puma with the Tetra Pak uh, sponsor, yes, which exactly. I that's, think I find it really, really iconic. That's the one. For me, this is this is what how Frankfurt shirt look should, should look like. This is for me. Yeah. I, mean, I cannot get really on board with the old black look, but the white uh, jersey that looks really, really, really nice. I have to say, it, it is really, real classy. The, there was a time I was about to get a Frankfurt shirt not long, not long ago. I was hunting for a 2014-15 one, the one mm -hmm. with the Alfa Romeo sponsor. Yes. But I didn't come. But I didn't have the have the trigger to get it, so I kind of stopped. I totally understand because I, when I've been looking, I mean, on my pages, and we're already starting with the first topic. <laughs> Where I saw a Frankfurt shirts here, here and there from uh, even a little bit older, but I always found them a little bit too too expensive, more than forty or a few euros or so. And I always here said, my, I always here my place is so rare. Hmm? Yeah, here in my place in the Philippines, it's so rare to find one of those uh, Frankfurt shirts. Most of them on Instagram or even on Facebook, it is so so rare to find one of these. Uh, gems like these yeah nah uh they are not easy to come by uh even around here in I Austria I mean I can buy from the store but at the moment they are then really coming down price I mean this one I bought for full price but it's the fan version it's not the official replica uh, it's not the, the, not the uh not the what the players were or even what the fans were with this uh with this overlapping color I know you don't like overlapping colors but to me uh -huh. personally I do find my love in from what Nike have created and ah, from what weird. they did to Barcelona with their last season's uh, away shirt. It looks really nice and black and with the gold trim. Yeah. I've seen many people here in the Philippines who wore, wore some of them, but uh, some of them they even wore a little bit too thick. And I do have, I do have a history of wearing some of those fake shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah, now I have to say, Nike, this is a step too far for me. I mean, I, uh, I get for me, the, for me, a shirt, if the color is weird, that almost breaks the shirt for me in many ways. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, a bit, there can be many other things can go right, but if the color looks weird, that's for me. Uh, yeah, it, a no, no. <laughs> it's a big no, no. Yeah, yeah. I understand your perspective. Uh, we may have a different opinion aside of what which colors do have our favorites. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I don't like the color of this fan or shirt. Uh, that's, uh, the, I, the, that's a 1011. I, yeah, I used to own a 1011 Italy away shirt with the same styling. Yeah. Uh, it's plain white and has some blue trimmings on the collar and there's a there's a cool trick of, of that uh, of polo color from Puma. It's you can also tuck in the part where the where the trim in there. It's a uh, I've done that one before. True. I may have to do that. <laughs> yeah. It still has to try. It yeah. still has a triangle there, but yeah. That, <laughs> yes. That's pretty nice. Yeah, cool. it really is. Mm -hmm. I kind of gave it away. I I wish I would love to bring it back. I have so many shirts this year that I have returned in my collection, and they are not in my uh they are not in my list though. Mm -hmm. 
yeah it's you know can happen at some times i mean i yeah i know yeah I, it's but i want to ask you uh kind okay of this topic we already have a little bit touched on it you said of frankfurt course. shirts are really hard to come by i mean you live in the philippines which is not necessarily yes. a country where all the big clubs are from i mean i in austria am already a little bit out of that area how where and how do you find jerseys <laughs> well in the philippines there's some rarities here in where you can find some of those uh uh rail or gem shirts like these like a uh, frankfurt that you already mentioned there's also a fbfa stuttgart that a home or away jersey mm -hmm. any any club from europe or even from south america i know a place in the Philippines that sells a lot of sh lot of uh, dead stock shirts. I know in Baguio, in Benguet, they sell quite a lot of shirts. Uh -huh. But there's also one in Davao or Il Ilo. They, they tend to find some of those uh, rarities in there. Palawan is no exception. They There's some occasional sort some uh, rare shirts. They do stumble upon a 98 Frank's home shirt. I was failed to uh, grab it. Uh, I was I was too late. I didn't even manage to get one for myself. I used to have a fake shirt of it, but I did let go to someone else for a very good cause. Uh, he sells shirt for donations, and I was too late to get that one, and I, I kind of forgot to get it. Yeah. So basically, there is quite some opportunities for you to still get some uh, to get good shirts. I mean, I know you have a pretty cool collection uh, with. Uh, you know, yeah, very... I have all of my shirts stacked up behind me. Uh -huh. Cool. Um, apart from my 0708 that I, that I tried to show you, uh -huh. which I, I will want to show it to you now. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's a really, it's uh, a beautiful, yeah, yeah. It's a really beautiful shirt. It is. I have. Maybe with 19. I only going to show them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I only going to show in excellent condition. I am. I only chose by by my own personal opinion that are the best one for me. I know, I, I do remember when, you know, I always had, I mean, I have a few Barca shirts here to myself. My first Barca shirt, so this is of course the last one that I had. The first one that I got was of course this one here. Wow, that, it's uh, a really nice shirt. Yes, my brother stayed for a year in Barcelona on an exchange semester and he's, he's, a, he's a huge Barca fan. And I said, <laughs> it's probably time for me to finally get a Barcelona shirt. It took me ages to realize that the sleeves are of different color. Yeah, just like this season's home shirt. Exactly. Which I know for a fact that I know for a fact that uh, this I know that the 06, 07 does have the same inverted uh, sleeves. Mm -hmm. And this design, to me, in my opinion, it does inspire from the 92-95 one made by Kappa, but without the jacquard of the Kappa. This one is all simple. Yeah. It, is, it has been my go-to Barcelona shirt for a very long time. And I got this one for only relatively cheap, for only 500 pesos. Yeah, well, from, a, from a seller from Cavite. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. It has no uh, name set, sadly, though, but it's a very interesting shirt to have. Mm -hmm. I wore this one a whole lot. Yeah. I, the one you have, I do saw. I do saw one selling uh, one with Rivaldo on the back. However, the name set is a little bit too damaged. Yeah, uh, for me it was always at, on, in that uh, era was Clivert. But um, the funny, the funny story is, this is not the first. It's the first Barcelona shirt in my collection. But I visited Barcelona in 1990, exactly in the centenary year, and my brother uh -huh. said, "Please buy me a centenary jersey with a number on the back." And I went downtown and I went to the store and they had their Rivaldo Figo, which he said is what yeah, oh, no, no. <laughs> that I should get. Um, and I said, okay, now let, let's go Rivaldo. But it was the it was a fake version where they had the centenary logo uh, on, yeah. on the front. And they said, no, I want to have the authentic Nike. And they sold me the authentic Nike. And I walk out very happy of being able to have bought it for him. And then I, it was really, it was pouring that, that then I, my, my clothes got soaked and I said, okay, I have this shirt that I put on now. And then my friends tell me yeah. that I was with, there's no Rivaldo on the back. And I said, oh no, 
<laughs> what can yeah. we do about it? Okay. So I, I wore the Sentinel shirt on that day and I brought it to him as a gift because uh, I did not like the 98 to 2000 Barca shirt at all. I, I yeah. Like I do. I do also own one back then, back in 2017, I think. Mm -hmm. I started to collect a lot of shirts back in 2016 or 15. I, the first time I started buying a football jersey is from those local uh, uh, jeans stores. Uh, they do have some 13, 14 uh, jerseys. The first Barcelona shirt that I bought is the home shirt from 13, 14. Mm -hmm. yes. Which is the player version with the La Liga patch uh, uh, all sticker on. Mm, that's the one with, it's the, also uh, fake. with the gradient sleeves. Yeah. With the yellow uh, v-neck. Exactly. That was my first Barcelona shirt. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. Yes. Really that's good actually, that, that's one of the better ones I have to have, have, have to say in recent years. I actually like it. I, I couldn't really deal with the, um, the, the gradient, gradient sleeve. The, well, the half the yeah so yeah i yeah actually all my shirts i think this is now the most recent is the one that's hanging there because then i wanted to finally have a i was so happy the to hold this one without sponsor okay. yeah i understand i did i did watch one of your videos about the 16 17 barcelona home shirt you i know you want you desperately wanted to have the the treble winning season where they won in Berlin against Juventus. I also do have one with me in my collection. Yeah. It's a very long time for me to get this one. I this doesn't bought here in the Philippines. I my mom bought this one in Bahrain. It it cost a, a thousand uh thousand uh Arab dollars uh, Arabs in there. Uh -huh. And also doesn't have any Anita Disco replica version of this shirt. I really love this shirt. I, re I think <laughs> it really looks it looks great. Just the sponsor ruins it. It really looks great. I know. I am un I understand the sponsor. It really does. It depends on the sponsor. It can fit well with the shirt, but there's some there's there's some sponsors that don't fit within the jerseys. Yeah. Especially the one with Manchester United, the one with the big Chevrolet. It doesn't, it no. doesn't jive well for me. It's I just a, have the 15. Ugly. I have so many uh, Manchester United shirts with Chevrolet. Yeah. Oh, uh, this, the Chevrolet is I, of the ugliest I, ever. I know. But as my favorite Manchester United a sponsor for me personally, it's one of those with, uh, with either Sharp, Vodafone, or even the one with AIG. I have, I also did have a 07 online home shirt, the one with the AIG where they yeah. beat Chelsea in Russia. Yeah, yeah. And the now the AIG, I, I don't like because it, uh, there's the box around. There's a, yeah, I, the box. That's the one also, that, that ruins it a little bit. Uh, about, for me, it will always be sharp with Manchester. Just, uh, that's how I started seeing Manchester United. So it always has to be sharp. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I know the uh, two that I have, the two that I have with A on, I think that looks all right, but it looks also a bit cheap because I don't, uh, Sharp uh, is a company yeah. that you know. A on is not a company. Yeah, it's, that, 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 Sharp that, that, is a very, very iconic company, an appliance company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Sharp is an iconic appliance company and it's very popular here in the Philippines with their uh, Aquos HDT. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> so. That's cool. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I want to say on the 14 people you parse shirt. Uh, the other yeah. thing that I think what would look better if we switch the colors. Yeah, just like the one with the just like the one with your 16, 17. Exactly. And all seven away with mine. Yeah, exactly. I think Barcelona shirt have... should have the blue in the center. That's kind of my <laughs> yes. That to me personally, I've grown used to with the red shirt being dominated in the middle. But whenever I see the Barcelona shirt, I used to own the one with the 5 with the full 90. I think personally, the blue dominating in the middle is really pretty much the perfect one. Yes. And 0708, that 
that was the icing on the cake for me. I I know I I've been saying too much about that shirt. It's, uh, no, no, absolutely, absolutely not. not. This is a gorgeous shirt. This is absolutely. This is the for for me. This is the uh, the Barca shirt in many many ways, because it is so. And I yeah. uh, come now, fifty years around. This is so. It's it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. It is. Yeah. Cannot. Especially one with the away shirt with the azure blue with the all over V-neck color. Yeah. That really looks like gar so garish and beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's also the one he there's no. It's also come in with a Henri on the back. I almost, uh, I almost tried to get that one as well to add both from uh -huh, the yeah. collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember the blue shirt. I, I think it was worn in the semifinal at United. That's I think when I really saw it. When Barcelona was not just quite there yet. It was. Yeah. Was still they, a they were in some sort of a transitional period. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was a weird period for Barca, but uh, at least they made a Champions League semi final out of that one. Yeah. Also, got to be said. So uh, that was pretty amazing. But I always thought, I mean, the blue, I, I did like the shirt per se, but I always felt it is not quite a Barca color. Mm. Either way. Yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. It's, Sometimes the colors do do not blend well with the shirt for yeah. the most part. Now for me, and I mean that's why I I I think this is a definitely a point that I want to discuss with because I know you're a Barcelona fan. It's also um, yeah. What do I'm you also, think uh, is, a, is a proper Barcelona away jersey? Because to me, let me set it up. Uh, Barcelona is one of those clubs that is absolutely guilty of. We have always a home shirt with the colors, and then we just take any uh, random uh, wild color, plaster the crest on there, and sell it as a Barcelona shirt. Especially the last few years were absolutely horrid with what they came out with. Yeah, the light purple one is a bit, uh, it doesn't fit well for me in my perspective. To me, my ideal Barcelona away shirt, it's uh, it's always going to be orange. I know there's some bit of a Dutch collection, a mm -hmm. connection, and also they did one in the 92 with Ronald Koeman. And my first ever Barcelona, yeah, <laughs> it's the same, it's the same season with the home shirt, yeah. Yeah. It does remind me of the 92 uh, European Cup win. Exactly. With the... I do like the I do like the trimming on the color of it. It's but I do prefer one without the sponsor because yeah yeah absolutely. You, I know printing is a bit of an issue. Yeah, when you say the orange one, I this was one of the first European Cup finals that I ever saw. I think it was the third one that I saw. I remember watching this orange shirt and it didn't it didn't compute for me how the colors went all over. I mean, now I have seen it and I could study it in detail, but when you see it live, it just looks so strange in many ways. And I, the first time I saw it, because they were actually really lucky, lucky in the season, because Kaiserslautern had them beat in the qualification for the Champions League. Only a last yeah. second goal of Paquero actually got them to the group stage and they went all the, all, yes. all the way. But for me also, I mean, all the this, way yeah, ever since then, I mean, I want to say that in 91, they played Manchester United in blue, but uh, we watched it that on a black and white TV, so I didn't really see the black blue. Black and white. Yeah, black and white. Go figure. <laughs> 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 it was not, uh, it was, we were, um, we were living uh, with my grandparents and for a short period and at that, at that time they had only a secondary TV up there. But they don't watch TV and so they had a very, very old TV yeah. that's how I watched it black and white. So but the first time I really saw Barcelona play in color was actually an orange shirt. So, so for that reason for me also, orange is kind of an acceptable color because that's the first color that I it's saw. The, it's, the, it's the color for Barcelona away shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I have to say, I accept this one too, but also only yeah. because they won the Cup Winners' Cup in that one. The Cup Winners' Cup with Ronaldo in 96 and 97. Exactly. Where he was at the speak in Barcelona. Exactly. I do very much remember that when I saw first this jersey, I thought this is a weird color, but then of course they won it, and that actually elevates it up for me to yeah. a acceptable color scheme. 
it was it is a great design inspired from Gaudi, the artist the artist from Barcelona. Yeah. It really does resonate perfectly with the city of the of the club. It's, mm -hmm. And I do like the one what Kappa did back then. They also did reuse. They also did use back then for the first time with the teal, with the red and blue on the shoulders of the Kappa Shakar. I think the one where they did with Romario and Storage Club back in the day. I think it's a it's a really nice shirt. Yes. In my opinion, it's a nice shirt. Yes, you're right. Actually, actually, they've used this color more for that badge. Yeah. But for me, it's kind of uh, burnt into my brain as a another proper Barcelona away color. You're absolutely right. Yeah. On that one. Yeah. But when I look at history, I mean, for me, the funniest thing is that up until the early 80s, Barcelona played in white jerseys away. Yeah, uh, white has never been is never been seen for what Barcelona did back in those times. I know. 1970s, uh, Cruyff did wear white back then with blue shorts. Yes. One with Maba. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I have to say, when I look, for instance, at the Lyon shirt, I think if you pull yeah. that off and put a Barca crescent, it may look for us now weird. But I have to say, white. Yeah. Just the club's colors. This is something that looks That's actually cool. quite nice. But I know yeah. that no bar, no self-respecting Barca fan will ever do that again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like the red, also Inter, did. the red Inter shirt. Yeah, the one with the big red uh, Saint Ambrose badge. No, no. I, the purely I red. I also did have the home. Yeah. I also did have the home shirt, but I didn't get the away. Uh, the away shirt is so damn uh, rare here. Yeah, I know no, there's here so many as well. collectors have been trying to get, yeah. No, but I, I, I know there's so many collectors who are trying to get their hands on it. It's so, it's one of the greatest collector space in my opinion. Yes, but the I meant the I purely a... red one. They yeah, had a pure, red. They, they had a purely red away shirt with just a uh, uh, blue and black sleeves, which... Uh, blue and black. Uh, 1213 away. Exactly. The one with the, the, one with the blue and black. Cuffs. No Inter fan wants to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't totally understand that. I mean, if, if if there was for some reason a blue Milan shirt. <laughs> uh, that's a no-no. I mean, there have been. I, I am also a Milan fan as well, just like yeah. you. Exactly. But and the... judging by the fact that Milan wearing their abomination a so-called of a fourth shirt yeah that didn't drew much of attention in that game it ended up in a draw in, Bol in bologna yeah. horrible which uh, which it did which the result didn't do much with do well in terms of what they wear mm -hmm. i understand i'm a tw i'm also one with the younger generation but to me personally i'm more of a traditionalist kind of person or a collector Absolutely. in many ways mm -hmm. going back to Barca. i often wear one shirt that will do fit well in the generation which is the nigeria one that's 2018 however i know it's a it's another uh big shirt that i kind of acquired back then it was 2019 yeah. that was before that corona hit mm -hmm. but going but back to I Barca. Also, I, yeah <laughs> Going back to Barca, <laughs> we have not covered all the sure, colors sure, yet. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the other one that I can accept is that I like is actually yellow. Yeah. But yellow. I prefer yellow with the Blaugrana. I prefer yellow with the Blaugrana than over the 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 flag design. The, the sash, the sash. Yeah, the, the 1920, the one with the sash that inspired that, that inspired Croy back in the day in the 70s. It, I think it is really nice, but I think 08 09 is what sticks me the most because that goal against Chelsea, where they drew level with the goal from Kinesi, it's, uh, it's, what made, it's what made me as a Barcelona fan. And Iniesta was one of the best midfielders out there for not only for Barcelona but for Spain in general. Yes, 
it was absolutely amazing and i want i want to say that's that's the that's the one Barcelona away jersey that I really still would like to have. I think I'm quite settled. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. I mean, I've seen it a few times pop up and then ended up not buying it because I have already, what well, I think enough Barcelona. Oh, but, no, I mean, I have six. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's, uh, if there's a really nice one, but that, 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 that is one that I would like to have. I mean, it's more neon colored, which is maybe the one bone of contention. Neon green. Yeah, but other than that, I really like this shirt and it was worn so often also. I think it was for, for three consecutive yeah. seasons. 08, 09, and 09, 10. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's an app, it, it's a really gorgeous, it's a, a really nice design and I absolutely love this off center. I mean, like the Lyon shirt. Yes. Yeah, it does, it does, it really does remind me of that, of that Lyon shirt of yours. It, with the off-center striping, I know I understand that it the sponsor can make or break the design of the shirt. Whether yeah. if it's an off-center, if it's an off-center stripe or if the stripe is in the middle, like for PSG, for example, they did release one of those shirts back in last season, where they were celebrating their 40th or 50th anniversary of the club. I think it is a really nice shirt. It was going to be a nice shirt until. The big all core uh, sponsor really ruins the sh ru ruins the aspect of the shirt, in my opinion. It's yep. yeah. It was almost going to be a perfect ten. No, because it uh because it just broke up the pattern. I mean, if you do it in such a way that it, it's yeah. Let me show you where I grab 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 grab. I have to. Where are where's the, here the French? Oh, la 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 la. Here it is. <laughs> Oh, wow. This is how you do the sponsor. Yeah. Not it's break a really, it up. really nice shirt. It's a really, really nice shirt. And it, I, it is number one in one of my Paris, uh, Paris Saint-Germain home jerseys. It, to me, this one has to be number one. For me I know too. 98, I know 1998, the one with the much uh, darker blue with the fade, yeah. along with the hectare stripe. With the dark mm -hmm. polo color, I think it's second to second best. Yeah, I mean I have a soft spot for the '95 one, but it's because that's when I really got aware of them. I think I, no, it's not here now. But I have to say this for me is my favorite PSG shirt. I also because the blue is a little bit lighter, but of course they they also won the European the, the cup in the cup in that one. So the this is for me. Cup, yeah. I'm so happy. It is a beauty. I am so happy. This was one of it my is a really, first. Really beautiful shirt. Yeah, this was one of my first second-hand buys, and I'm so happy that I got this one because this. I told the seller I really want to have this one, but at the moment I cannot do it. Can you save it for me? And he did, yeah. and then he left it at the university in Linz for me that I can pick it up whenever I want. And I was so happy to get this one. I think he sold it for me for 30 euros, which is oh, a, a really good, good price. price. Uh, yes, I'm so, and I'm so happy that, that, that I have this one because this was a shirt that I've been after. I always wanted a PSG shirt. My first PSG shirt that I have is the is an away shirt from 98, 99. 98, 99. I, yeah. I, I, I did watch one of your videos about the away shirt in 98, 99. I going to that one. Uh, I know you've been. I know I watched one of your videos. You've done. You went to Paris. You went to on a field trip there just to uh -huh. study your French. And you met with a PSG fan who's who collects a lot. Who has his room a lot of PSG shirts. And uh, you did bought uh, you did bought the away shirt from a PSG store in in, in Paris. In a, on the same uh, trip yeah. that I bought the Barcelona centenary shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, I bought it and it was on sale. That's why I bought it because they were already getting ready for the new season. There was the bin. Yeah. Old shirts. 90, 99, yeah. And, yeah. So I picked up the away jersey, although I always want to have the home jersey. So for me, uh, it was always about this one in many ways. Away. And uh, it was actually to the point where I, when I really wanted to, finally I had the means to buy a proper PSG shirt. 
they always came out with those ugly designs. I mean, ever since Ibrahimovic came, there was one ugly one after the other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first PSG shirt that I have collect that I acquired is the one with the 1213 home shirt. The one with the two thin two-tone stripes, which kind of does remind me. I know they've been using that same design from 1415 with the with one with a big blue uh, block. It doesn't look nah. that as nice to me. Just, uh, it, it, it annoyed me so much because just before Ibarimovic came, they had this navy one with the edge design. It was really looking nice. That one yeah, I do. I do, I, I do encounter just one of that shirt and it is a really, really nice shirt. The one with the singular, uh, the one with the crest in the center and the solution also. Despite mm -hmm. the fly embers breaking the stripe, it still is a classy looking shirt. I really do like the white color of it. It's a yeah, really yeah, nice, exactly. beautiful shirt. I would love the own one. Yeah, yeah, me too. But you know, I think I have one. And, and I mean, the other one I have is the uh, 1920 home, which to me is kind of a nice yeah. variant. Uh, not perfect, but it's a, it's a nice uh, throwback. Like it. It's a nice throwback to the 90s. And yeah. also, it is the great relationship that Nike and PSG had back in those days. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, no, I, I did. No, 19. I just yeah, had, to yeah. get my, I had to get my years right. <laughs> yeah, so am I. Yeah, yeah. No, PSG. It's like, uh, I mean, it's almost a little bit PSG and Barca. They, uh, they has always a pendulum. There's one that I don't like, followed by one that I like for home and away shirts. They, uh, it's just yeah. too much uh, variability there. And with PSGs anyway, I mean, the, they try to be fashionable and then they come, they come with those yeah, I, shirts. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I have, I have found, I have been, I've been, Having a nerving, nerving problem about about football shirts breaking uh, tradition, they chose the route for fashion over tradition yeah. or fashion over function. Because what I do not like what they did in El Clasico wearing the Yoji Yamamoto. I know I I know the 1450 shirt is not that great in my opinion. I do like the black from 2002 or three, which really does, it's to me, it's much more elegant than the, than the, the dragon uh, design. Well, the dragon because makes I it for me. Much more, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's all about the dragon, but I do, I do remember that I said, okay, I have this one. Yeah, that one is a uh, really nice right? Madrid black. It's better than the one with the dragon, and at that moment I knew it. I or that my one. they even they even made another one from Yoji, the one with the white three, and it feels like it feels like it's a fashion. Uh, it feels like like a where you get it where you get one in uh, local uh, local supermarkets where you found yeah. with Real Madrid crest plastered on with paint or. A different idea, a different manufacturer or flight Emirates all over it. Yes. To me, here in the Philippines, we always like to we always like to follow trend whenever we need it the most. When pandemic hit, everyone is talking about football jerseys, and all the shirts that have been releasing in 1920, they have they have plastered out everywhere and. And all of the shirts that they're selling is nothing but fakes. It's yeah. nothing but fake shirts here. Some what I don't like for most uh, for most uh, sellers who are selling uh, jerseys that they wanted to follow the trend or they they tend to fear of missing out or FOMO yeah. for millennials. Mm -hmm. And I I do not like the way how they how they say. Uh, they will always compare uh, on uh, replica jerseys as the authentic, authentic ones, or fake or high grade jerseys as the authentic ones. And there's some local made that here in the Philippines that they have also the same design but the different material. I just don't see. I just don't. 
find it uh, very much attracted with the way how they make. I know you gotta respect your locality of your own country, but to me, it's just like you're trying to imitate what they, what other manufacturers are doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's. But you know, at the moment, it's all about copying, 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 copying. Yeah, it I is, agree. It is so funny. I mean, uh, it's even on the big manufacturers. I think we, um, what was it that uh, we were talking about? Uh, that um, I think it was the 14, 15 Adidas design. Yeah. Kind of pointing the way for what Nike did in 16 already. 15, 16. Yeah, exactly. Or 1617. 1617, kind of. And now yeah. that, um, or was it the other way around? I don't know. But um, yeah. uh, a friend of mine said that the new Adidas, uh, the new um, Nike jerseys that will come out now for the World Cup. Yeah. So much copying what Adidas did 2020 with the uh, big swooping shoulders. It almost. Big swooping. Uh big swooping a purse or raglan sleeves exactly which, uh, which yeah which really find which i find it very unattractive to me because i know that i know adidas are very known for their uh Candivo template i've been seeing so much of those Candivo templates especially here in the philippines there's i saw some of those dead stock our uh, russia home shirt from euro yep. 2020 the one with the controversial uh sleeve. yes yeah, that one, that, the, the same template. I just, this one is not that bad. No, it's not that bad, and that's why I got it. Uh, yeah. Because the sleeves look at least interesting, because I want to have an Union Berlin shirt. Yeah. They all look boring. I said that's the least boring, because there's at least a little bit of yellow on there. But the template with the way this is cut, I mean, if this is straight, I, I can get on board with it. But this, I, yeah, I this agree. curve doesn't look It's good. all curvaceous in, in my opinion. Yes, exactly. And all they want to all they wanna do is copy the original, of course. Yes. The, oh, the 92, the equipment bag. Yeah. But I mean, the color is more or less the same, but one looks much better than the other. Yeah, I feel like the original is much better. Yes, 100%. Of course, kit regulations don't allow it any, 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 anymore. I know, this is, I know. This is when Adidas was still great. And for me, yes. if I'm honest, ever since uh, 2000, Adidas is losing it for me. The one with the Euros. Yeah, but the Euros, I think they came still up with good kits. Um, but then from that point on, I didn't ever really like, I mean, I think the 1415 had some good ideas, but then the kits that they made were horrible. But I think the template yeah. is, a, is an okay one. And then the year yeah. after was also, but uh, all, all overall, Adidas has lost their ways for me. They are not- have, I think, ways. yeah, Adidas have lost its touch yeah, of absolutely. designing shirts. Yeah. But what they were doing in the late 90s, I mean, there's one classic after another, and they all look still great to me. Yeah. The to me, the 90s Adidas were, were the pinnacle of football shirt designing. Yes. And you can see a lot of catalog, range of catalog shirts that they made, especially the one from 1989 to 91 with the candy, with the asymmetrical triangles and also the one with Adi, well, Manchester United with the sharp with the with the, they nicknamed the snowflake with the blue and white yes it is a really nice design and of course with Very the Bruce nice. banana I everyone is talking about the Bruce banana yeah although I don't quite understand it I think it's so ugly that every, that everyone likes it I mean there are certain things from yeah. the 90s that are so ugly that now those those people like me that were young in the 90s uh they have the memories attached to it but to be honest uh, <laughs> it, it's still not a great shirt <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is a different time I, yeah absolutely i mean i have i have i have to say the the very early 90s before the equipment range there were some ugly, ugly the equipment. The yeah, the the 
Yeah, no, with the one that France had in 1990, this was one ugly shirt. Fortunately, qualify. And then yeah. there was also um, uh, the one that the, that the Czechs were wearing at the World Cup. Was Czech very... or Slovakia. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, it was with, with the fully with the triangles, it was kind of mold growing over. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, a I, very... It's a very outrageous design for yeah. the checks. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I have to say. So uh, those were, but then with the equipment range where they really went bold with the uh, three stripes all over the shoulder, I have to say this is iconic. <laughs> it is a, it is iconic. I have to agree. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So yeah, very happy with that one. And like twenty bucks. <laughs> But it's, it's, not, so. it's really it's really affordable i have to say no i mean i've i saw it for once for cheap for, for really that cheap and that's why i could get that's why i got it i mean for i see it uh, these days for around 80 way too much i would not buy it yeah. but i have i have to say that that particular salzburg shirt this was this was a team that all of Austria fell in love with and they went all the way to the UEFA Cup Finals. So for me, there's some memory attached to that one as well. Although, there, yeah, there's some memories. Although Salzburg at the moment, it was always yeah, the, the team that I always then uh, like to dislike the most, but that one I just had. Yeah, yeah. With the, with the Red Bull, where they got taken over by Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's, all about, it's all about the cash grab. Especially, all teams are following suit with Red Bull. With the uh, New York Red Bulls, are the Leipzig, the Bragantino, mm -hmm. and many, many teams has now been taken over by Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. But I have to say, there was even before that there was always a rivalry between Linz and Salzburg because Salzburg is this posh town, and Linz is kind of a workers' town. And Salzburg takes yeah, all the headlines. So whenever a Linz team plays against Salzburg, there's always uh quite some clashes a bit of a bit of a friction yes uh it was always a special game and then when Salzburg became so popular whenever they played here in Linz in the stadium all the teenage girls were showing up because they had some pretty players and uh the fan curve was very high pitched at that time which was a special yeah. phenomenon that you had for five or six years whenever Salzburg came you had all the teeny teenies uh showing up in Salzburg scarves uh, at which point, you know, I love this team that made it to the UEFA Cup final. I was rooting for them. I still liked them a year later when they still were good. But then it quickly started to turn for me that now this is getting a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is getting a little bit too much in, mm. for the most part. Oh, yeah, but at least uh, there's some emotional connection. And so I'm happy with that. One. Yeah, 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 I agree. So, and at least this is still uh, the purple Salzburg, which is something that we don't. It, it, they still exist somehow, but it's a that, that, that's a complete difference. Yeah. Story. With the, yeah. the one thing I have to say that I, as much as I dislike the whole Red Bull uh, construct, I have to say they have been doing an amazing job footballing wise. Uh, yes, footballing wise, and they did also very well in Formula One when. Uh, Red Bull already got one of the two teams in two racing teams, mm -hmm. and they've acquired one of the one of the big names such as uh, David Coulthard and Mark Webber, and also they even signed up Sebastian Vettel along with it, and including today with Max Verstappen winning the World Championship uh, last season. I know I may got a little bit off topic here about no, that okay. one. I know I've been, I know I used to be a Formula One fan back back in the those days. Where Schumacher dominated the entirety for Ferrari. For me, Formula One died the day Senna died. Yeah. That I was the when, 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 when I lost my legend. interest in the sport. Because I loved, yeah. I loved him so much. And then suddenly he's gone, and then this German. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I understand. Everyone has their favorite uh, legends that they yeah. idolize the most, including. Nigel Mansell, uh, Alan Cross, mm -hmm. um, Jim Clark, Jack Brabham, yeah. uh, Marina, Michelauda, who's also an Austrian as well, mm -hmm. who won two 
World Championships where he said who was having battles with James Hunt. Three, yeah. Three, three World Championships. Yes. Him and Fer Lauda and Ferrari is the most wonderful connection. However, Lauda and Mercedes, it, it really did pioneer everything. They really did pioneer everything with their dominance and how they perform with the new relation in Formula One. Yeah, especially yeah. with their enigmatic team principal Toto Wolf was becoming uh was becoming so enigmatic for for, for Mercedes, especially with their uh, poster boy Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Formula One is a pretty huge deal here in Austria because of Nicky Lauda and so on. And they were always, I mean, uh, it's almost to the point that we always have a driver, at least in Formula One now for, I think, over 10 years. We don't, or even 15 years. But yeah. there's so many team owners that are Austrians. So uh, many follow it. I mean, I don't follow the sport anymore. I, I, got, I, I understand. For me, it's only I wanna see. I don't. I wanna see only team sports. That's what I wanna follow. I mean, I skiing is huge here. Yeah. I barely watch any ski races because Frankie is boring. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so I I used to be a huge fan of basketball. I grew up. I grew up playing basketball. Mm -hmm. However, I don't feel. I, however, I don't feel any bit of a good. Any bit of a good connection about basketball. I find it very. I, I love to play basketball. I wanted to be one of those players here in my country and also the one playing in the NBA. But to me personally, the day when Michael Jordan retired from mm -hmm. Chicago Bulls is the day, is the day I stopped what is is the day I stopped playing basketball. Yeah. And also, yeah, Very simple, all the teams, all the best teams, all the best players from NBA were no more. Yeah. 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 I never really got into basketball. Uh, a, it's not a big sport around here. I know, I know. Uh, it was here always, in the Philippines, yes. It was always. My I know heart. here in the Philippines, basketball is a is a big deal, and also volleyball as well, and including boxing. Boxing. When Pacquiao retired, yeah, of course, many Pacquiao. Yeah, I don't. I don't find it very much. Yeah. I don't. To me, when Pacquiao really retired, he, that's the day where boxing is no longer. I find it a good sport for me. And I know I used to watch some collegiate volleyball back in back in those times in 2010. Where uh, in my in my there was a university that I was rooting for, two of which, and it was the Blue Eagles and the Tamarao, which is FU and Ateneo. Mm -hmm. That Ateneo were so dominant back in those times, and the, the time when Ateneo have started dominating throughout the years, that's where I started to switch allegiance teams left and right, and yeah, yeah. it didn't work out for me for volleyball. Yeah. The funny thing is, I mean, so that's why, that's why, well, that's why I, that's why I changed sports. Football is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. But for ball sports, another one that is actually popular is handball. And steering it back to Barcelona, yeah. uh, I remember the other day that yeah. the Linz handball team in the mid to late 90s made it to what was the equivalent of the UEFA Cup final, uh, the Europa League yeah. final, and they lost that final to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> That was, yeah. I think it was nice. I was say it was 95. This was, this was 95, and it was a pretty big deal around here. I mean, since then, it's kind of so and so with handball. That was a huge thing. And then you had suddenly FC Barcelona playing handball here in Linz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, <laughs> Barcelona can do it all in many sports. I know the females. The female side of football of Barcelona yeah. are doing wonders this season. Lots of best players in the in the feminine side. Absolutely, absolutely. They are they are absolutely yes. wonders. This is. Uh, I think. I mean, it's great to have it for statistical purpose, but I think um, the, what the next step is that uh, it becomes a competitive league there as well. That there's a real. Uh, yeah. uh, and that it, 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 it's a real the, challenge. 
Yeah, exactly. And that it avoids getting to where the man's game is, where it's basically a duopoly between two. two yeah. Teams, so that it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. That, that would, would be great. Yeah, um, I agree. But you know. Uh, what, 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 what I, had, I had to say from a country where a team dominates the men's side. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. That, that's yeah. one thing that I would like to, I don't know the recipe, but I would love to see a little bit more parity again. I don't want to see Bayern Munich win a 10th title in a row or Salzburg picking out know. or Juventus. It is, it, this is sucking the yeah. out of the game. Yeah, I agree with you. And I know I understand dominating the league is is fun from for other for, mo, for other fans out there, but for the for the casuals or even for other teams, they I know they do find it a little bit tiring and they get a little they get bored. And there's some times that you just don't, you just don't want to see another team winning yet another league. Yep. In Bar Munich, for example, you. Juventus now in this season they're no longer what they are in. they're they're no longer the most dominant team that they are now ever since last season they were that that title have thrown away with Inter who are completely running away from the league yeah. and for Bayern yeah, Munich, the... there's no way there's no way you can stop Bayern same goes to PSG no, there is no. It, it, it is not Bayern that needs to come down. It needs the other teams like Dortmund need to get their act together in many ways. And I agree. I agree. That's the Dortmund that, 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 really that's has the Germany. But I think so the problem true. goes even deeper. That for me, the Champions League, as great as it's still the greatest competition out there. But there's yes. a sort of, uh, predictability to it. It is now if we've got great games. But it's always yeah. kind of the same teams. Yes, Barcelona and Bayern are falling suddenly away. They're replaced with the English teams. But I, yeah. as much as I enjoy Manchester City play Liverpool, which is one of the most enjoyable um, duels that I see, because both of them just play offensively. You don't have this to play. Yeah. They really go. I really enjoy that. And it probably would be the fitting final for this season. But I yeah, I agree. All English final. I don't. I also don't want to see the Europa League. I don't necessarily want to see an uh, all German final. An uh, all German final, yeah. Just like what happened back in 2012 13, the yeah, England exactly. League where Dortmund beat Bayern, uh, Bayern beat Dortmund. Yeah, exactly. But you know, if it occasionally happens, I'm fine with that. But yeah. I don't. But I don't need the, to see such a regular occurrence. I mean, I think uh, City and Liverpool meet is like the fourth or fifth all English final. Yeah. Fourth of all English Six. final. Fourth. Yeah, I I agree. It's, it takes it takes a little bit of a, uh, away. And I know, for me, it it only makes sense because those are the two best teams in the world at the moment. I yeah. Absolutely, and, and if they go there, they fully deserve it. But I think there's a larger problem that the Premier League is definitely pulling away from the rest of Europe because of they have the, the yeah, money. money. And they have the, they have the financial the, structure. And if the others only want to do this with the Super League and all that kind of crap. You yeah, know. yeah. I, I've been really vocal about this uh, proposal of the Super League once it hit, once it hit in April. That's what what the owners did was so unforgivable, especially when back when Barcelona used to have Jose Maria Bartomeu, who uh, declared that Barcelona wants to join the Super League because of it's because of his uh, incompetence of handling financial uh, financial stability. It ruined the it ruined the the salary and the finance of Barcelona or cash flow from Barcelona, it really, it really pains me that, to see how we are in this position to be in. Uh, I have to actually, I have thankfully, to add something. It's no longer I have to add something. But what I, what okay. annoys me at the moment, with yeah. Barcelona, that they did all this crap. And then they still can pull off a transfer window where they basically seemingly turn it all around. I, it's not out of spite, but I actually wanted to see Barcelona offer a little Barcelona fans for once to accept that. Okay, you're not making it to the Champions League. I mean, I'm a yeah. Milan fan. I think it would. 
I don't find it quite fair that you can suddenly you look like you're not qualifying for the Champions League. You were paying for the. I know that the new ownership is not the one to blame for, or the new president is not the one to yeah. blame. For. But all I these, know, I know. All these problems, I think there need to be accountability for there. But uh, for the Spanish teams, I think it was the same thing with Real Madrid in the late 90s, where they yeah. were in so much debt that they, they were uh, about to go down. But it doesn't apply. Those entities can never need to suffer in many ways. Yeah. This is what annoys me. And uh, in Italy, the two big boys, yeah. Inter and Milan, both hit Inter and Milan. times. But Juventus, of yeah. course, uh, swooped in and then completely pressed them down in many ways. Yeah. As a, I yeah. think it was a revenge for Calciopoli, to be honest. But. Yeah, I agree. 2012, 13, all the way to all the way to 17, 18. That's where Milan and Inter were hitting at a very low point. Yeah. And I do agree that 13, 14 was the beginning of the end for Milan. Yeah. Especially I do own that the horrid the home shirt, but I gladly get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, it started with bad shorts there. <laughs> I yeah. no, but the tw- uh the I mean, what what is never talked talk about is that the 11-12 championship. Yeah. I mean, yes, the Milan Juve game there was the basically decided because Milan should have probably won that game. But I think yeah. what what was always forget that we had a four point lead in uh, late March, and they that one away, and that's where the Juve came. They, yeah, they this really was Milan, this is Milan the... losing the title and handing it over to uh, Juve. Who were on the up? Yeah, they literally took. They literally threw away that that great opportunity to have either 18 or 19 titles for Milan. Yeah, I, exactly. If yeah. it wasn't for that, the Champions League uh, campaign, we w- Milan would have been the, the best team in the world, bar none. Mm-hmm. But with but I know Juventus have the have. So have the structure, they have the money, they have, they have the, the players to do so. They have and I know stadium. that one legend had to go. Yeah. I know they have to let go the Piero and many iconic all the recognizable players, including Ned Bed, who's now currently working with them, mm-hmm. along with the Agnelli family. Yeah. But the big thing is Juventus put the old stadium, which Inter and Milan still cannot. And yeah. And the Roma, same I've seen, problem. Yeah, in a, in, it is the same problem. In, in Italy, uh, it is a, in Italy, if they could build new stadiums and revamp the entire aging infrastructure, and if the clubs could own the stadiums, they could actually yeah. catch up again. But um, as much as there's charm in stadiums like the San Siro, or I mean, especially San Siro, yeah. but, uh, even if I look at Venezia, uh, that is a stadium that I've been to. I mean, it is uh, scenic as can be. It's very scenic. But a lot of tourists. It's, a, are, it's an absolute hole. This is a stadium that is uh, falling apart at the seams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, if that can be, if that can be renewed, I think the Italians have a way to come back. But uh, if you don't own your own stadium, I mean, I mean, we'll see now. I think Real Madrid, if they complete the stadium project, whereas Barcelona is stalling, I think I yeah. can very well see Real Madrid for the next, uh, for the foreseeable future, dominating the Spanish game. Yeah, I agree. To me, Real Madrid have they have the better financial structure, and they have the they have the they. They have a wonderful project to boot, and mm-hmm. I understand that the stadium, the new stadium of the Santiago Bernabeu, may kind of do look like a software, but to me, it is a really ambitious uh, idea from from the club. Yeah. And, and to me, I can I know I've been putting a lot of hate from, in a sense. Ever since Karim Benzema have been starting to uh, making a scene in the Champions League and in La Liga also, he he is a really an, an incredible player, rightfully so. Yeah, he, he has the qualities of a good. He has the qualities to win the Golden Boot. I know Lewandowski as well, who is also rumored. I mean, if I mean rumored yeah. to go to Barcelona to challenge Benzema, 
for that uh, gold for that uh, gold, golden boon. Yeah, I don't know how they can pull this off, to be honest. Yeah. But I think it's more, more or less Lewandowski saying, you know, I have options. Uh, Bayern, uh, uh, you know, a little bit out of our same. They have the same agent. They have the same yeah. agent, Alaba and Lewandowski. And that, that agent is one of the super agents who kind of is not shopping his players around. Although I yeah. I don't know. I'm, we have to see. I, I cannot, yeah. I, from we'll what I hear, we'll, I cannot see. Only time will tell, at least. But you never know. Yeah, <laughs> oh, only time will tell. Yes, exactly. So yeah, it will. It, it is definitely going to be an interesting project. Uh, I it mean, is. the one thing that I have to say, Paul is positive, Barbara. So I think maybe getting Xavi. Mm -hmm. Although I was not very excited because he was an improved manager, but maybe he can turn yeah. things, things around. But. You know, again, as a Milan fan, they brought in all these former legends like Seedorf and Inzaghi. Seedorf, Inzaghi, Gattuso. Yeah, Gattuso. Yeah, Gattuso. Gattuso in 17, 18 to 18, 19. He did, he did fairly well. He did a decent in job. In terms of putting, he did a decent job. He did, he did put the team back together. He did. Uh, he showed a little bit of backbone from the squad. He disciplined yeah. them. He made the team follow what they can do to him. They know what they they know what they're planning for Milan, and it is a really it is a really unconscious effort that why they had to sack him. Although there was some mutual consent that is going on from Milan and the higher uh, up. I think I do understand that. I honestly think that Gattuso, uh, while he, he's a great, uh, he, he's a player's coach in, in the sense that he has enough authority to kind of get a squad together and he's good in team building. And that, yeah. kind of, but yeah. on the tactical side, uh, I don't want to say he's, uh, he's by no way a dummy or whatever, but he's, um, he would have held Milan back because. Uh, Although the last few games for, for Milan reminded me so much of the last the, the season where Milan just missed out on the Champions League, yeah. uh, it was kind of always a recipe. It was, it was predictable. It was slow. It was not when all you need it wasn't. Uh, for Milan is speed, 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 and this is what ha what what has yeah, they all, been exciting they me so go, much. They always the go they don't have it again. But as long, if they can yeah. play with speed, then Milan uh, has a chance. I agree. Um, we gotta see. Sure. I think I wanna go to the last topic that we've agreed on. With yeah. the rebranding of logos. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebrand <laughs> how the rebrand, yeah, I'm wearing Fiorentina 06, 07. I also, there's also another one waiting for me coming in. Yeah. I understand what Fiorentina have uh, going through. They wanted to follow the formula what PSG and other Italian teams like uh, Inter and Juventus, how they change their uh, logo, how they change their brand, how they change their structure, and how they change the, their way of life for football. I understand changing the logo would be a sensible thing. I all I know that the diamond, I know that the uh, diamond pattern. What they had back then, back in 1951, were they only finished fourth in that season during the, during that time. I think I, I think it is a really classy old logo back in the 50s. They did replicate the one with the V. I don't understand why they had to put the V on on I, the diamond. I know. I mean, I think I'm more. I think overall, it's not that bad, and we have to get used to it. I always say this with yeah. all the pages. I, I'll say a bit more on that. I yeah. think the reference to the 50s logo is pretty cool. I think yes, what we tried to do is, is, if they would have just taken that, I think it would have been probably been too strict to change. They wanted to kind of switch from what you have on, because there's also the yeah. E in there, and kind of put this in. But for Fiorentina, exactly this shape is so iconic that. Uh, what I don't like about this logo is that you go from a very identifiable Fiorentina shape because you just need to give me that shape. 
And I know this is the Fiorentina yes. logo. This is the only thing, the only club that has such a logo. Only big yes. club has such a logo. To go, fortunately, they did not go for the circle because I hate it. Yeah. The team now when they have a new one, they, they come out with, with a circle. Yeah, I agree. I agree that most teams in, across across the world are going circular nowadays. I know why they use because... this. Because... I know why they, why they use the square because if you have the two logos on the TV screen, yes, the, yes. the square is maximizing the area. It's like it, yeah. really mathematics. If, if, if you have that logo, I mean, I think, for instance, I think Celta de Vigo or um, yes, Granada, they are very elongated logos. In Granada, squeeze this a little bit because it's yeah. lost. <laughs> Leipzig it's actually. Lost Leipzig recognized that problem not too long ago, and it was I said always the Leipzig old Leipzig with the wings of wave too out so that they had to yeah. squeeze it together to kind of make it uh, show up better because most media companies just scale down the logo, so that's yeah. why I know why Fiorentina went for the square. When they went for the the diamond shaped square. Exactly. I, I completely I completely agree with you. And it's also, and a, also, simple, the also a simple shape that when you scale it in and out, uh, the information loss is not as big as with the logo that is on the shirt now because the, the lily is beautiful and very interesting. The Ilgilio. Yeah. And the ACF is kind of smallish in there and gets lost. So you have just the V for viola. Yes. I understand this, but I still feel I, this logo had something very special, very unique and recognizable. It is, it is recognizable. But you know, I'm one that even says that uh, this Barca logo, I like yeah. the one from the other shirts better. It is. Because the lettering fills out the, the space here. This looks lost it is. to me. Yeah, I understand. I understand how they wanted to change the logo back in 2003. Yeah. 1970, that 1975 logo. Mm -hmm. It is really iconic in my opinion. Yeah. But I know I grew up with, I grew up with that uh, crest, but to me the old logo really does look nicer yeah. than the one we have today. And I know Back in 2018, they they wanted to follow the same uh, route. They removed the FCB logo. They just removed the out. They removed the black outline. They made the they made the blaugrana only just two stripes, which really do, does look not unnatural. Yeah, Thankfully, it didn't happen. If you ask me, I think the way they did it was not the right way, but I think they had the right yeah. idea because I. I really think you can take, if you have the FCB already so small, you can take this out. Yes. You can increase this, but yes. what, 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 what I didn't like is that uh, those two logos here did not follow the outline. They were kind of cut off, which, which made it really look ugly. But it, yeah. uh, it, it would have been a minor enough change if done right that I, yeah, was not. Yes. I saw a, a, a supposed new Milan logo where I also thought, oh, this would have been. No. Yeah, a little bit much. I don't recall it now anymore, but I know that once one, 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 one went to change the logo, but for me, Milan needs to have the oval shape. There's just no. Yeah, I agree. And I know they have been changing I... logos, but it's always the same. It is always, always the same oval shape. I mean, they sometimes say Milan. Yeah, it is the same oval shape. Yeah. It is the same oval shape. There's a big difference with the striping and also the cross. The ACM and also the 1899 is still the same. Yeah. And but the one big one big bone of contention is they they inverted the stripe farther away from each other from the cross. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, you know you, you can always, but at least it's for me it's recognizable. It's where I think the Fiorentina went. I can just see Fiorentina there, but I'm not a big fan. But I also have to say, I'm not a big fan of the 80s logo that they're currently wearing. I want to have one of those. Yeah. But yeah, it, the Flavio Pontella uh, yeah. logo. I, 
for me, I, I'm a sucker for symmetry, and that, that's why this logo doesn't count it for me. I mean, there's something really, I know there's something interesting and clever in there, but to me, it just doesn't quite do it. Oh, but, but I really want to pick up one yeah, of these I agree. First because I think they are really nice. And I have my eyes on the yellow one. For some reason, yeah, the, the yellow one best. The yellow one really does look nice. Yeah. Although my wife says it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I asked her because I have a purple. I want to get an away jersey. And I know that the white one, I agree. With, I actually agree with her that the white with purple looks nice. Yeah, when I look at all the shirt in white is nice. shirts, there is yellow missing a little bit. I have only a yellow Roma shirt, yeah. and armor is not coming up. So, yeah, and I to, there's something about this yellow with the purple that I have to say I, I enjoy it a whole lot. So, yeah, yeah. yellow and purple they kind of do remind me of Batistuta and Rui Costa era days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know. I have to see what I will order, but I probably will. I probably will go for the yellow with the purple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other one would I... be a red one, a red Fiorentina shirt. That the, from, the one from yeah. last season with, with the big cross, that's also one that I would love to have. But... Uh, the red Fiorentina shirt is also the one with the 07 away for Vieri. Uh, was with them, uh -huh. and also the one with the Toyota sponsor yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, to me personally, when it comes to Fiorentina jerseys, I do prefer the one without the sponsor or make it rather simple, make it very elegant. I know there's a little bit of gold that may give a little good touch. There's, I know this one is really, this one is a very regular uh, Fiorentina shirt. There's also the one where they had with the gold stitching and also with I the gold that logo. Too, yeah. all over. No, I I actually do like the one that you're wearing. Uh, it's, <laughs> but I, I, there is some. I mean, it is definitely two uh, thousands in a way. But there's a certain. I mean, uh, I, I think it works well. It is. The material is a really nice one. It does feel very stretchy. Yeah. Cool. Uh, at the, at yeah. As I said, I only have the Cox motif on. That one is a really nice Fiorentina shirt. And I bought it in Florence. Oh, really? Yes. It is a nice shirt. That was, and I remember we went into the store. Uh, we, we had a place right next to the Duomo. Uh, yeah. That store is just off the Duomo, like two of, uh, and I said to my wife, okay, we need to check this out. And this was the season where for they released the five different colors. Yeah, five different yeah, I don't colors. Have a purple. I don't have a purple shirt at all, and Fiorentina is for me the purple club, so I need to get one. And we walk in there, and my wife starts kind of the red one looks nice, the white one looks nice, the blue one looks nice. And so, <laughs> I agree with you that this is probably a color that looks better on me, but it needs to be purple. <laughs> I said, pull it on, pull it on, and I put it on. I said, it looks nice. I said, thank you. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> I am. The other thing is that I went, I got the Serie A patch in the store. Nice. And for some reason, this would have been five euros more, but they deducted five euros from the shirt. The lady did something uh, wrong there, so I got it a bit cheaper. Uh, <laughs> so. I do encounter one. Uh, I do encounter one, but it's only a away shirt, the one with the like, oh, it is the one with the Cox for Keith. It's also the white one. But with the also different logo from the from one of the shields in Florence. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, however, there's a custom name set. Uh, I really don't want it. I don't want a jersey. The one with the custom name set. I fell victim from one of those jerseys that I collected. All the shirts I used to have, they all have custom name sets. Yeah. Mm, that, yeah. That's that's. But um. I want to go uh, last one on the um, new logos. Yes, yes, yes. I actually have to say, I start liking the Juventus one. Inter, Inter does not, Inter looks like a comic strip logo. 
Yeah. It, it, it looks like, uh, I mean, I can see what they try, try, try to do, but uh, yeah, I yeah. Say when uh, exactly with the parameters that you have to scale it down and make it simple and, and, and so make it simple. They scale it down. They remove the SC from the from the yeah. press. They remove but I a have little to say, bit. Of gold. It is growing on me. I actually think they did a good job. I mean, I got now a Uber shirt with the previous logo. Oops, let me get this one and. Uh, let me get the other Juve shirt here. Okay, okay. I mean, this is the Juve logo that I grew up. Wow. With. But uh, it is beautiful, but it's unnecessarily complicated. Yes. Then they don't. I do. I do. I do want to this one. That one. Yeah. It is a really nice. It is a really nice logo. In I many ways, is, this is how I really grew up with. Yeah, but to me, it is a cheaper version of this one. Yeah. It is I a do cheaper version of this one. And um, I have to say, I mean, I know the bull is not very well seen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very scaled down. Yes, exactly. So I, also, I also do own back then an 0304 home shirt with the old logo with the fast web sponsor. Mm -hmm. And that is also the same template that I have with me with the Valencia home shirt with the, where they won the UEFA Cup. Is. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I, I remember that one. But I have to say that yeah. the logo that they have, it is instantly recognizable. It is very simple. Every child can draw the logo. Yeah, it is. It's it is a, a huge thing to do. It, it is a huge thing. When they removed the Juventus word mark on top of it, they, yeah, it made it. It is a, better. Yeah, it is a very ambitious move where they remove the Juventus lettering on the mm -hmm. top of the J. It's a really, it's a good way to recognize a uh, a crest from a from a distance. Yeah. And they did they they kind of nailed it honestly, especially what, what they did in 2021 where they had it all gold. It's a really it's a really ballsy move. It was a super bold move, and I remember when I saw the crest first, I thought, what is this? Because I you know this double J, I mean I got it then. This is the black and white stripes kind of, and you see it, then it's within a shield. What I yeah. think also, what's also smart from them to do is the oval shape is very prevalent in Italy. You distinguish yes. yourself immediately. You went to something that is recognizably other, absolutely yours. Now, I mean, that too many clubs are following that one is a completely different story. I mean, Nantes did not do a good job. Uh, yeah, Nantes, for example. It's not bad, but it's not a great, it's it's too uh, cheaply done. And I think uh, Inter- It's cheaply made. Yes, Inter tried to do something, but what annoys me with Inter is they introduced this new logo. It's all blue, yeah. black with white, and then none of the new shirts. They removed the, the gold. Yes, it is suddenly completely differently. And what really makes it weird is this side thing is to make it a circular crest, but uh, that is not part of the I or the M. That makes it look so yeah. weird and cartoonish, and even the M looks um looks really cartoonish in many ways i think if it they looks just, quite diff it looks too neat too niche, yes if they would have just gone with uh letters let me pull out if you just take the letter oh, in here <laughs> yeah yeah if you just take the letters in here kind of a little bit maybe yeah you get something or if you just take the, I mean, the gold is actually iconic, but maybe make this, I don't know. I just think uh, it's it's very much a cartoon logo, the new one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but again, if we have, only, we have it only for one year, maybe it needs to grow on us. As I said, after a year, yeah. like the Juve logo, I meanwhile, I have to say, I think it's a genius move of theirs. The last, it, great, it the is. last great move that they pulled off. Yeah. Uh, I I know in 2017 I I have some 
huge hate from that logo when they released it with the black and white and Logan. But that but as years go on, I started to like that. I started to grow on on me without the J logo. Yeah. Ever since when they removed the lettering, it's it it made they made a hundred times better. Yes. I think uh they they really are on they really did the right thing there. And so yeah, I mean logos have always been changing. That's the one thing yeah. that I I I, I think uh most of us don't recall logos have always been changing um so we need to get used to that but yeah uh it is it is always a sticky issue because you don't want to veer too much from your identity but you also want to stand yeah. out of the way yes yes so very it's very interesting but i that that, that yes. new logo yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about it. I mean, a smaller change like Bayern Munich did when they went from when they yes. just cleaned up the pattern in the center. Uh, that I think is okay. Uh, that was awesome. I mean, I mean, the Atletico Madrid change I also understand. Yeah, it is. Because if I look at the old logo, this is not very recognizable. Recognizable from a distance. From a distance. The only thing is the new logo should not should have colored it. I agree. I agree. Uh, they could have at least colored the the apple or strawberry tree and also the bear. Exactly. Because if you wanted to make it, if you wanted to make the bear and the tree up close, you have to color it up. Don't make it. Don't follow up with the the color what the press did. Yeah. Exactly. And ever since they released it in 2017, 18. It's a, it's a really different feel in my, in my opinion. They should have at least come up with something really great to color everything in, everything up. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and if if they do that, I think this is a logo that the fans will also accept. Anyways, but the, I agree. But the old logo, I totally understand why it needed changing because uh, it's not only. Um, not, not only is unrecognizable, but it's also uh, parked in the corner. And yes. I understand that this is the coat of arms of Madrid, kind of. Yes. But uh, it is not that great. <laughs> 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 in, 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 in a way, I mean, there, there can, can be proven, but they went a step too far again. So, yeah, we have to see where, where this I goes. agree, yeah. Hmm. I, let's see, I think we've reached almost a 90 minute mark. Um, yeah. How um, do you want to talk anything else with me? Or yeah, for sure. I have some so many questions. But I already uh, followed up so many questions. Please ask me now because discuss. you know I, I I I will need to wrap up soonish. But ask me questions. I'm more yeah. than happy to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll go I'm only going to do a, a, a lightning round question for you. I already I tried to make discussions with yeah. some other people. I only did barely. Mm -hmm. The first one is this. What what would be your favorite brand of football jersey in regards to the material and quality of it? Um from Ricardo. I am split between Nike and I think what Nike has been doing quality wise, especially when I look replica, is really nice, but I also like Macron in terms of the individual designs. To me, this is a brand that should be way bigger. They should be the supplier of Italy. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I know back in the 95, they did, they did wonderfully with Drake Rambert uh, designing the shirts for the Asuri. The one with the rustic, uh, rustic patterns, and also the one with the big coat of arms of Italy with the three stars. It's a, yeah. it's a. Although a this is for me, it was a, that was a step too far. I, I like my Italy shirts very uh, simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The most simpler, the most simpler jersey that Nike made for Italy is of course the one from like Euro '96, the one with the white and gold, and also the one. From the World Cup in France in '98 with the that shiny was, uh, 
That was for me recognizably Italy, uh, but it's what yes. it I like my Italy shirt blue with a flag. Yes, the flag somewhere yeah. at the other one I found. It needs, yeah, I agree. It needs a little. It needs some flag trimming on the collar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mine. Okay, another one from I have. I have a friend of mine in Indonesia who collects uh, football jerseys like me, including you, and also Kevin from Indonesia. What makes you to be a football jersey collector and what influenced you to collect jerseys? Uh, it started very early on. I mean, this is a long question, but it started early on with me watching the 1990 World Cup and wanting to have shirts from the teams you're watching okay. then it got into a one i have the shirts of the teams that i like which was you know i needed to have a milan shirt i needed to have a milan sh uh, 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 last shirt then i liked ajax it snowballed from there then uh the first time that i really bought jerseys of teams that i didn't necessarily support is when i went to london and i said okay i'm going out to every team and i'm buying a jersey from every team of course the teams that i only saw are uh, chelsea and spurs we couldn't find west ham but that was the first time where i really bought jerseys of teams that i was not necessarily supporting and then it went from there yeah, uh, it kind of broke up the connection there. Yes, I know. Uh, we have a we have a rainstorm coming through, and that always impacts our uh, connection, unfortunately. Yeah, I I was scared about 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 the weather that's going to happen here today, but it didn't affect it didn't affect me though. Yeah. It don't, the rain only lasted in the morning. Yeah, well, good, 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 good. good. Uh, that's why I knew that there will be a weather coming through, and uh, that was another reason why I said we need to kind of 90 minutes. That's the time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Now you can ask. Uh, ask me one one point, or two more. Yeah, one question. I know it is in terms of collection wise, what is the most grail shirt? in in your personal opinion the most grail shirt in my collection yes the most grail shirt oh italy 98 my, my very first shirt my very first shirt and it was a player issue wow it you you want to the other issue for the replica it yes. is blue red white green and blue green this is a clear issue i ha had no yes. idea i had no idea up until uh eight years ago that this is a player issue it is a nice uh, it is a really really nice shirt in your in in my opinion it is still especially the one without the it's like it's the first shirt that i have and i'm not sure if i can beat it <laughs> yes <laughs> it, 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 okay. it, it's all the box my first shirt it's a shirt that i have a memory a, a very uh clear memory with I, I have an emotional connection to that shirt it's uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i agree it is a really classy classy shirt mm -hmm. uh one final question yes one final question for you, again before we go and wrap things up. What are, what would be the best way to maintain a collection wise? I know there. I know I felt victim mostly from uh, sh shirts getting uh, their sponsors torn up. What would be the best way possible to maintain a football jersey? Um. For me, A, keep them hanging. Yes. Uh, wash them when you wear them. Yeah. Wash them. I wash my shorts 15 minutes on a gentle cycle in a bag, especially if there's a sponsor on it. Uh, you can be like this Italy shirt that I just showed is very sturdy. That will not. Yes. Yeah. And do it a little bit more. But gentle cycle.
very low, no dryer whatsoever. Stay away from the dryer. And if it should happen that something bubbles yeah. up, take out the iron and do the job and it is like new again. Of course, yeah, the more jerseys you have, the more jerseys you have, the more you can switch around and you don't destroy the ones that you like. Oops, now this one. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just the window yeah. flew wide open and I got a big splash of rain <laughs> over me. <laughs> yeah. So I guess this is a sign we have to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. I'm sorry, uh, I, usually, I would love to have a little bit more, but I think it is... Uh, yeah, I... We'll do it again. It is, yeah, it is a wonderful time I had. It is the first time I am doing a live q and with you, Roland. It is a pleasure meeting you and I'm here. where can we find your social media? I know you, I know you're not even active on Facebook or that much. I have stepped down my social media. It's really my YouTube channel is it at the moment. Yes. The thing where I do I will probably Instagram and Twitter. Uh, the links are in my video uh, below. I yes. Usually yes. Uh, I have a Facebook group, but to be honest, I had to, I, if I want to do the YouTube and have my family and have my work in addition, I cannot spend additional time on social media. I mean, I scroll yeah. through, I see, I sometimes like stuff, but these days I barely post and I barely write things anymore. It just it becomes too, too distracting, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. any case thank you so much roland for for a wonderful time and i'm so yeah. happy to have finally met you and you know i the views should know you're one of my one of my oldest subscribers and, yeah and you i know you like me i know in many videos yeah. <laughs> yeah. So i know there are so there are i know there are so many apple cultures youtubers that i kind of like I know back then there was this uh there was this guy who uh from India who collects a lot of Manchester United jerseys, mm -hmm. but I know he doesn't re rarely that rarely upload that jersey collection whenever he updates. Turns out he's actually a great great musician. Uh -huh. He his his band name is a uh, Chicken Masala. Masala. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Well, as I said, um, yes. but I'm glad I, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I met the one, one of my favorite YouTubers that I know. I've been very loyal subscriber to you, so no, it, I, I hope it stays that way. Absolutely, I I know I'm sometimes you know same thing with following YouTube channels. I have my ups and downs, but I always when you have good mercy videos, I really I I love watching them because you know I love seeing people yeah. with jerseys. It's just the best to me. And I have my yes. four or five channels where they unpack and show their collection, and those are the ones that I really really enjoy the most. But other than that, I usually the stuff I watch on YouTube is very much soccer unrelated. <laughs> so, yeah. Because I consume so much live soccer and other things that uh, yeah. it, it, it becomes a little bit too much and uh, the overwhelm is too much. So it's most yeah, of the yeah. history and music stuff that I watch on YouTube. But I have yeah. like four or five people on YouTube with jerseys that I love to follow and that I have a close connection with. And that's for me really, yeah. really cool. uh, I do have subscribed a lot of uh, football jersey YouTubers, mostly who are in a pin and subscriber mark like Charisma, yeah. Mr. Jersey from Brazil, Marcelo, mm -hmm. and many others who, who unbox a lot of jerseys. If they're, they're the ones I always follow. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. in, yeah. In any case, thank you so much, Roland. It is a pleasure. Talking with you for a few hours, and yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. we're gonna do it do it again real we'll soon. Do it sometime for, again. Yes. Yep. Thank absolutely. you. All the I'm best. I'm gonna talk to you soon for all the video for all the times that we're gonna talk together. Mm -hmm. Up until then. Up until then. Bye. 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 
Well, I really hope you enjoyed this chat. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to more, see more videos like these, and I'm surely going to talk to you soon and bring you another conversation also, you know, in about a month's time. Let's see. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.